You ever felt that you've been hanging on by a string? You ever felt that way about life? You're barely hanging on? Can you relate to that? Maybe it's a big thing or maybe it's 20 little things. But for us, we feel like we're hanging on by a thread. What is it? Is economics? Having a hard time paying the bills? Wondering how I'm going to buy groceries this week? I just can't keep up with things. Uh, someone needs to have surgery? We just can't do what we need to do or have to do. Inflation's bitten us. Maybe economically, I'm hanging on by a thread. Or maybe, time-wise, just too much of life coming at me at once. I just can't keep up with everything, everybody's demands. It seems like there's too much on the plate for me to continue to do. Ever felt like you're hanging on by a thread? Or maybe parenting? Maybe grandparents? Maybe it's the health of a child I'm concerned about? Or health of my grandchild? Or maybe my kids, you just don't mind? I'm wondering what type of children they'll turn out to be. Ever felt that way? They're talking back. Or maybe even for work. Some real stressors there, some real pains. I'm not sure if I want to keep there. I have no other option. I deal with difficult people. You ever felt like you're hanging on by a thread in your own life? And maybe other people wouldn't hang out by a thread by what you're going through, but what you're going through definitely feels like you're hanging on by a thread. So a couple years ago, I had a sermon here, Palm Sunday, and, and Philippians 2 is really a song. And Philippians 2 goes like this, Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature of God, didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he emptied himself and took on the form of a servant and died on the cross. And the song goes on and says, therefore every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And that's sort of a song. And in my sermon, I asked people to say, what's your life song? Somebody said, Old Man River, that's me. <laughs> Somebody said after the service, if I were a, wish, a rich man, okay, that's my life song. Some young kid says, I partner of mine, okay, all right. However, a friend of mine, uh, a dear friend of mine, who's no longer with us, and I knew what he's going through, he emailed me the next day because he heard this sermon online, and this is what he said. He was dealing with stage four cancer. He said, my friend said, I'm living on a what? By Bon Jovi. So I looked up those words, living on a prayer, and he was living on a prayer. He'd been dealing with cancer uh, for about five and a half years, and when he wrote that to me, um, his life was only about seven months away from the time that the Lord called us home. It always struck me what he said, living on a prayer, because he couldn't live on anything else. The chemotherapy no longer worked. The medicines were hard to keep his pain down. Uh, he had a strong will to live. He loved his family. He loved his children who were in high school. But he's right. The only thing he could really live on was what? Prayer and said, I pray for you and live on God. But he was living on a prayer. Life by a what? Living life by a thread. And he did so until his brother called me in December 2019 and said the Lord called him home. I always remember that, living on a prayer, hanging life on a thread. So scripture talks about many who hang on a thread. And you remember in the Old Testament, the Israelites, their backs are to the Red Sea. And here comes Pharaoh and his army is bloodthirsty. And the spears are sharp and their swords are ready to go. And their backs to the Red Sea and they're well, no doubt they're hanging on by a thread. God, how are you going to get us out of this one? Or the widow of Zarephath, remember her? I have enough wheat and oil to feed my son and I, then we shall both die. And here comes the prophet Elijah says, can you make me something to eat? She's hanging on by a thread. How's God going to provide for me? And maybe sometimes you felt that yourself. Or the thief next to the cross on Jesus, he just wasn't hanging on by a thread. He was hanging on by nails. And what's going to happen to me until he looked and heard what happened to Jesus? Remember when he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your <coughs> kingdom. Hang on to a thread. And then there's Paul. Uh, Paul, the witness, got bit by a poisonous snake and there's no doctors around. They are all living on a thread, living by a thread. Now, our gospel reading today comes from Mark 5, and I call Mark 5 sort of a breakfast club. Now, I'm not sure if you remember that cult classic, the Breakfast Club movie, if you haven't. Okay, Breakfast Club is, uh, the kids love high school so much they all got all day Saturday detentions, okay? And they showed up at nine, had to leave like at five, and they sat there and they couldn't talk with each other, and the worst thing to do is to bore a teenager. At my alma mater, Euclid High School, our colors were blue and gold, go figure, okay, never mind. Uh, however, we had this place uh, that was called The Hole, 
and the whole, I went to school with 3,000 other students, and the whole was about as big as a sanctuary, and it was this dull yellow painted, and there were no windows, and it went straight up, and there's just a door to get in, and everything was dull yellow, and your punishment was to sit in there all day, if not all week, if not all month. Not that I know from personal experience, okay? But people called it the whole. Well, anyways, the, the Breakfast Club gets together, and if you're not familiar with that, that movie, there's a jock, and there's a beauty queen, and uh, uh, there's a, a nerd physicist who's like straight-A student, and then there's a troublemaker whose parents don't care for him, and there's a young lady who just doesn't fit in with society. And there they are forced to sit together for nine hours and to endure the whole together. Just to sit there, that was their punishment because they loved school so much. We're going to sit there all day. And they began to talk to each other about their experiences. And what they found out was that it's not great being a beauty queen, everyone liking you. And dad wants me to win a championship. And you know what it's like to get straight A's. And for the troublemaker, you don't know what it's like to have unsupported parents. And for the girl who has no one, what it's like to be lonely. So Mark 5 is sort of a breakfast club get-together. And there's, there's really three main characters. The first one's a Gentile. That means he's not Jewish. And he's demon-possessed, so nobody wants to be around him. He foams and acts weird. Nobody wants to be around him. And then there is the Jewish leader, and he has a parent to a sick 12-year-old. Now, if you're a parent or if you're a grandparent, you would rather be sick than what? Have your kids sick? If you're a parent or grandparent, you'd rather have surgery than what? Have them have surgery. And if something's happened to them, you would gladly change places. So here's a demon-possessed Gentile, and the Jewish leader is not very fond of Jesus. And last is a wealthy woman who's had some sort of bleeding issue in 12 years. She just about emptied her bank account, and no one could do anything for her. And there's sort of a breakfast club of hurting, ailing people, all hanging on by a what? You know what it's like for me? Nobody wants to hang around me. I foam, and I do all sorts of violent things. And what about my daughter? That, that, that just totally dominates my mind. And my anxiety, and for the woman, I can't get any piece of health. It's just about blew all my wealth. And they're the breakfast club. What they all have in common? Well, I think you know. They're down and out. They live on a prayer. We're going to do. But more importantly, they all heard about Jesus, that maybe Jesus could do something about it. That's what they have in common. Maybe Jesus could do something about it. So, and so what happened is, well, Jairus looked up to Jesus and says, Jesus, spare my daughter, and Jesus eventually will. And, and for the woman, she just reached out and touched Jesus and said, I just know if I could just touch him, that there will be a big difference. And Jesus sensed that. He touched her. Some power left, and Jesus said, what are you doing? And the woman came clean. And then for Jairus, and he gets there, even though they think she's dead, Jesus said she's only sleeping. And, but for the woman, he said, tell the truth. What are you doing? Well, I thought you could help me. And so they're both healed, and so Jairus is immediately told when his, Jesus grabs the girl's hand, she gets up, get her something to eat. And for the woman, he says this, go in peace, free from suffering. In other words, now that I brought you healing, go back to what I want you to do. Go back to your stations and vocations in life. Sustain her health. You sustain your life. They get something to do. And so you and I... When I say that we're hanging on by a thread, for us believers, I'm saying we live by what? Because that's the only thing we have. So when life is down and out, when I say we're living by a thread, what I really mean we're living by faith. That's the only thing I can go by. God has to be there. God needs to be there. You heard this said many times. Many times people cannot look up to God until they're flat on their what? Many times you don't even think about God until God gives us a thin thread. And what my thin thread is is not the same as your thin thread. So Martin Luther says this. Can you all read it with me? What the great reformer says, Therefore, God sends wrestlings, trials, and struggles in order from day to day may understand and cling to the promise of God more clearly and certainly. That sounds somewhat cruel, but God's not punishing us. But God many times takes us to the place where we feel like we're hanging on by a thread for only us, that we might learn to trust and lean on him alone. He gives that to us, not to punish us, not just to trust our faith, but to build our faith. 
And by the way, if you say right now I'm not dealing with it, or I haven't dealt with that in my life, I'll guarantee it's going to what? It's going to come. Someone's going to be in the hospital. You're going to get a phone call about someone's death. Someone in a relationship with you doesn't want to be in a relationship anymore. And a place where you work might go belly up. If it hasn't happened yet, guess what? It's going to come. The question isn't if, but what? When? And God gives that to us. Not because he despises us, but the opposite. He calls us to put faith in him and him alone. Jesus said, if anyone comes after me, let them deny themselves and pick up their what? And by the way, my thin thread's not the same as yours, because your thin thread might not be anything to me. And your thin thread and my thin thread, they're not the same. But God gives it to us that we rely totally on him. Friends in Christ, I think that's why many of you return here. I mean, we could say, well, yeah, you know, it's sort of my Christian duty. And if I don't come, someone's going to be disappointed. And maybe someone's going to say, where have you been? But deep down inside, we all come back here because we all know that ultimately God will be with us no matter what. We ultimately need to hear the promises we hear. How many people have told me over the years, out there in my life, it's a mess. This is my sanctuary where I get away from it all. Out there is a mess, but this is where I hear about hope. I can't tell you how many times people have said, that's the only thing I can do, Pastor, is put my hope in God. That's the only hope I have. It definitely was for my friend who sent me the email living on a prayer. That's why we return to God. You see, for Jesus, Jesus promised Jairus when his daughter's ill and sick in bed, he promised her resurrection. And let me tell you what I mean by that. So if our time on earth is coming to an end, for us believers, we're promised to be raised with Jesus in eternity. So this past week, I'm on Facebook because I scanned Facebook for members and friends and what's going on. I wish people happy birthday. And I saw this obituary. And somebody said, this is a Christian obituary, you need to read it. And I've read thousands of obituaries. But this is a different one. This was an obituary wrote about a person. This was an obituary that the person wrote about themselves. It's not spoken as so-and-so in the third person. It's spoken in first person. And the, first, and the person who said this, I'm 39 years old, and if you're reading it, it means that the disease I've been fighting with for the past five years is no longer with me, and I'm totally healed in Jesus. And if you're reading this, even though my life has been cut short, by decades, if not a half a century, I have full healing with who? Jesus now. So friends in Christ, when we have a loved one who's on the deathbed and they've been fighting with disease just like my friend has, when the Lord calls them home, they're totally what? Healed. They're not in pain anymore. Jesus promises resurrection. And for Jairus, that was a, that was a promise. But for the woman, she was healed. And what I'm trying to say is, no matter where you're at, and maybe God's going to resurrect you or he's going to heal you according to his will. Either way, those are God's promises to us. Now, I spend a lot of time in nursing homes and with shut-ins. And there's people in nursing homes who've been there for five or ten years, and they say, I simply lay in bed and pastor, I don't know what my purpose is. It's the same people, it's the same attendance, it's the same thing over and over again. And once, or, once a month or every other month, someone comes in, or you come in and bring me communion, and I just don't see the purpose. You know what I share with them? God has to have a purpose for you to what? Be here, because if not, God call you home. Well, I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is, but God does. There are people that you are touching, and there's good that's coming about that. You can't see why you're here. Guaranteed. There's a purpose for you to be here, and God has that. So either way, for Jairus, there's a promise of resurrection, but for the woman who got healed, you're healed now. Go live in peace. When we hang on by a thread, hold on to both those. If this leads me into life's end, I'm healed in heaven. If not, God will bring me the healing I need to serve his purpose. And so we cling, we hold on to God's promises, and so today, I just want you to think about those songs and hymns that we sing. I want them to commit them to your memory. So if you're in the hospital and a loved one's having emergency surgery, or 
if you're at a funeral home making funeral plans, or you're at work at a very difficult meeting, or you're in some sort of argument or fight, and wondering, how did I get into this mess, and how am I ever going to get out of it? Then cling to these. My faith holds on to thee, Jesus of Calvary. Uh, we, sung, we sing this often, I'm trusting thee, Lord Jesus, trusting only thee. Do some of these lyrics sound familiar? Commit them to your memory. In Christ alone my hope is found. We sing that at 11 o'clock. It was sung just at the 9 o'clock service. Be still my soul. Remember that? The Lord is on your side. Commit those to memory. Say them to you when I feel you feel you're on a thread. Life's on a thread. Great is thy faithfulness. We sung that also at 9 o'clock. Or abide with me, fast falls the even tide. Commit those to your memory. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Commit those that when I feel I'm on a threat, God is with me, he is for me, and I walk in danger all the way. So I'm not sure if you're hanging on by a thread now or if you will, but remember, clean those promises of God. He loves you dearly. Baptize, just like Wyatt Allen James was baptized. He hasn't forsaken his promise. The cross is for you. His body and blood's for you. Lean on that, Christ, who loves us dearly. So how about this for a closing thought? Now, it says feed there. Change it to lead. I'm really glad God feeds us. I know it's almost lunch, but let's turn that to lead, okay? So can you all say it with me? All right. Lord, take my hand and lead me upon my sway. Direct, protect, and lead me from day to day. Without your grace and favor, I go astray. So take my hand, O Savior, and lead the way. And all God's people say,